male culture is toxic. And I'm not saying all of it is. I'm not saying it's completely bad. There's some good things in male culture, but I've experienced a lot of toxicity with it in my life and healed from it. And I'm, and I'm still healing, but I just want to share uh, some thoughts on it. And first of all, why am I saying toxic male culture as opposed to toxic masculinity? I think this is really important um, that I don't think it's talked about enough. Um, the phrase toxic masculinity is really misleading in my opinion because masculinity itself is not bad. Femininity is not bad. Masculine, the masculine and the feminine, the yin, the yang, these are just beautiful energetic expressions there's nothing wrong with either of them they're just natural different natural energies yin and yang masculine and feminine what's toxic is the culture the culture that that's popular among at least men from where i grew up in the popular mindset of men that gets taught to men that to me is um, toxic and it's not the masculinity itself, right? So, so I think like a lot of times that I don't, I don't like that phrase because it causes a lot of conflict and arguments. People are like, why are you saying masculinity is toxic? Masculinity is not toxic. You're right. Masculinity is not toxic because toxic masculinity is a misleading phrase. It's not about the masculinity. It's about the culture. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the most obvious one, emotions, how we deal with our emotions, all right? But the first mindset is just pull it together mindset. We don't process, we were taught to not process our shit because, and, and, and there, there is a positive thing here about like being, being taught to be a leader or somebody who people can go to for a sense of calm strength in us in a moment of chaos who's there to be the that calm strong sound mind in this moment of chaos that's needed somebody has to do that that could be a man or a woman that could be anyone but it is a positive trait to be the person who can be calm in that moment and I think that's where a lot of this like pull it together mindset stems from is like trying to be that that calm center. It's a it's a good intention, you know? And I think it is needed in that moment. Someone has to do it. But it is a great short-term thing in the moment, but it's a horrible long-term thing because it causes us not to actually process the emotion. We can be super stressed. Oh my God, this just happened. This person passed away, this person, blah, blah, blah. And we wanna be like, all right, I gotta pull together. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta suck it up. I gotta do my shit. I can't just sulk about it. And again, that is partly a good mindset. We don't wanna just lay in our beds all day and just soak. We have to sulk. We have to get into action. That's, it's good to move forward, but once we've gotten out of the moment of chaos and we're back into our normal lives, the emotion's still there. We haven't processed it yet. It's important for us to take the time, even if it's all by ourselves. We don't have to do this around other people if we don't want to. But cry, scream, journal about it, reflect. Think about why this thing upsets you and, and, and let the emotion out. Because the body's natural way of getting rid of an emotion is feeling it. When we don't feel it, we're bottling it up inside. We're keeping it in there. It's like, a, it's like you got a water bottle. You got the cap on. Taking the cap off and letting the water out is equivalent to feeling the emotion. Taking the cap off is allowing yourself to feel the emotion. Then when the water spills out, that's the emotion releasing. But this need to be unaffected i'm unaffected it's also an ego thing that we got going on who's the most unaffected i'm unaffected by shit nothing affects me like ironically the need to be affected affects us more than anything the need to be unaffected affects us more than anything because it it weakens us 
What happens to a water bottle that's like bursting full of energy and, and needs to just let, let itself go? You shake up a can of soda and, and you need to just let that energy out. What happens if you don't let it out? The can itself weakens. Maybe it'll, it'll spill out the side. It weakens itself. But we have this need to not be weak. You can't be weak. But isn't it funny? Isn't it funny that the, when we try not to be weak, we're actually weakening ourselves. Feeling emotions doesn't make you weak. It makes you strong. Running away from your emotions makes you weak. That's fear. I'm running away from it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to process it. That's weakness. That's running away. Strength is facing it head on. I'm de I am aware of an emotion that is difficult that's in my body right now. Instead of running from, from it and trying to be strong and unaffected, I am going to face it head on and feel it and experience it. Even though it's going to be hard, even though it's going to hurt, it's going to make me cry, it's going to make, it's make me relive some of my painful memories, I am going to face it head on anyways because I care about my well-being in life. I want to be happy and I don't want to have this shit affecting me for the rest of my life. Because that's what happens. If we never process emotions, it affects us for the rest of our lives. It just stays inside. It never gets to re be released. It never, we never get rid of it. It's always in there. Even if we've buried it deep, 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 it's still in there. It's still in there and it still will find its way to come out. You know, an, an example is like maybe you're mad at someone in your family for doing something, but you don't want to take the time to process it and be like, why am I mad at this person and learn how to forgive? Instead of going through that journey, it's just, I'm going to bury it, forget about it, forget about it, forget about it. And then when you're talking to that person, you may let out some passive aggressive shit. You may let out some passive aggressiveness. You may say something rude. Why? Because it's not really fully buried. It finds its way out as much as you, we, we really try to bury it. The only way to truly heal is to let it out, to feel it. That's strength, because it's hard. It's hard, it's difficult, it's really painful. It can hurt a lot to deal with it. I know, but that's strength. That's dealing with it, man. And, and the irony is this whole need to be unaffected, I'm unaffected. The only way to become unaffected is to first let it affect you. Let it affect you. Let yourself feel it. Because that's how you get rid of it. Now you're unaffected by it. Because now it's finally gone. I'll use, I'll use my breakup that happened about two years ago as an example. The reason I am currently... I would say I'm completely unaffected by it. Maybe 99.999% unaffected by it. Why? Because I let myself feel it. I let myself cry. I let myself process it. And I asked myself, why does this hurt me? And I answered those questions and I went and I had this whole inner journey of processing this emotion, facing it head on instead of ignoring it and said, okay, I'm just going to do this. I'm not even going to think about that. Whatever. That doesn't affect me. Blah, blah, blah. Instead of doing that, I actually process it. And that's why I'm unaffected to this day. But my first breakup ever that happened, I didn't do that at all. My first breakup that ever happened, I was like, this doesn't affect me. I'm ice. Nothing affects me. This doesn't matter. And guess what? I did that for four months straight. Those were easily the four most depressing months of my life. I was so fucking depressed. It was crazy, dude. I was even using weed to cope with it. Because that was another way of running away. That's not being strong. That's not being strong. I'm just running away from my feelings and making myself depressed, that's not strength at all. That's weakness. I was afraid of dealing with it. It was fear. My life was being dictated by fear. But I think in this male culture we live in, at, at least the, the, the culture I live in, that's not looked on as strength. That's looked on as weakness. Oh, like you, you feel stuff. Oh, you're sad about a girl? What's wrong with you? Why are you sad about a girl? Humans get sad about relationships when they get broken up with. This is a natural part of being a human being. That's not weakness. It's weakness to say that to somebody because you're, you're, you're encouraging somebody to run away from their feelings. <laughs> like we're not running away. We're facing things head on. That's true strength. You know, another thing we're afraid to do as men is be vulnerable. 
Why do we want to be vulnerable? I don't want to be vulnerable to, because then I might get hurt. I open my heart up to get hurt. So we want to close ourselves off. Now, I don't like that we use this word vulnerable. I don't like that that's the word we use because what does vulnerable mean? Vulnerable literally means putting yourself in a position to get hurt. But true to me, true vulnerability is not putting ourselves in a position to be hurt. It's actually doing the opposite. Okay? And I'm going to use the word vulnerable because I don't know what other word to use here is. But when we're being vulnerable, when we're not being vulnerable, what we're doing is closing our heart. We're closing ourselves off. That is self-harm. That literally is self-destructive. It hurts ourselves. Being vulnerable is being free. It's liberation. It's saying, I'm not afraid to put myself out there. I'm not afraid to say what my emotions are. I'm not afraid to tell someone I love them. I am unapologetically being myself and putting myself out there in the world. That doesn't hurt us. That frees us. That makes us feel way better. But closing ourselves off, that hurts us. Honestly, that should be called being vulnerable. They should flip the words. Really being vulnerable is not making yourself vulnerable. What we think we're doing by protecting ourselves, I'm not gonna be vulnerable, I'm gonna protect myself, that's truly making ourselves vulnerable. Because now we're getting hurt. We are hurting ourselves. It's kind of like, um, it's like imagine you're in a cocoon. You're, that cocoon is shielding yourself from punches and no one no one can get to you because you're shielding yourself in this cocoon but that cocoon may be your shield but it's also your prison it's also keeping you stuck inside and you can't ever leave the cocoon you can't be free break out of the cocoon yes when you break out of the cocoon yeah maybe there now you're exposing yourself to the world and some people out there want to hurt you yes this is true but at least we can be free. At least we can be free. And by the way, when people have hurt me, it's really, really sucked in the moment. But in the long run, it has been amazing. The two times I've been broken up with in my life caused me to grow maybe the most I've ever grown. They caused extremely growthful periods in my life. I am extremely grateful that I was hurt. I'm so grateful that I made myself vulnerable. I, I was being free and being myself and putting my heart out there in the world, being honest about my emotions and how I felt. Did I get hurt? Yes. Did getting hurt make a extremely positive impact on my life? Yes. Why did it make a positive impact on my life? Because I allowed myself to process the emotion. <laughs> if I were to say this doesn't affect me and never process my emotion up until now to this day and still have never processed emotions, of course I would have the mindset of, oh, I got to close myself off now because I don't want to get hurt again because I haven't even freed myself yet. You have to first feel the emotion, process the emotion. Once you do that and you get that sense of freedom, like, ah, it's like an exhale. You're, ah, once you finally do that, then you start to see what I'm saying and you're like, oh, shit. He's right. Now I feel freer than ever. I'm so glad I was vulnerable and I'm so glad I was hurt because now look at the person I am now. I'm freer than ever. I feel amazing now. But when we still have shit bottled up that we haven't processed yet, of course we don't feel free. Of course we feel like this hurt me. This made a long-term hurt on my life because it's still fucking in there. Let it out. Ah! Feel it. That's strength. Stop running. Stop running. Stop being weak. No, I don't want to say it like that. But like, really, that's real weakness. Real strength is facing it head on. And I know it's hard. You know, you shouldn't put this expectation on yourself like, oh, it's supposed to be easy to process this emotion. And if it's hard, then I'm not a real man. Like, no, it's going to be hard. And that's OK. It's going to take a long time. Well, I don't know how long it's going to take, but it may take some time, man. That's all right. That's about all I want to say on this video. Um, fucking don't be afraid. It's fear. Remember that's, that it's fear, okay? It's not, 
weak to feel emotions, it is strong to feel emotions because you're facing it head on. And trying to be unaffected is the biggest thing that affects us. It keeps us locked in a cocoon. We think it's shielding us and keeping us protected, but it's really keeping us imprisoned. Feeling our emotions and being vulnerable allows us to break free out of that cocoon and finally just be free to be ourselves. So, I love you. Thank you for supporting the channel. If you want to support it more, drop a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. Uh, especially if you want to see more content like this. Uh, and I love you. Bye.